four ordinary guys with extraordinary ideas for Disney parks. This is Main Street Musings. The experimental podcast of tomorrow. That's right. Welcome to Main Street Musings. I'm Tanner, and joining me today is a big old loser, Brock. All right. (laughs) Say hi, Brock. (laughs) And another giant, giant loser, Eric. Hey! And, of course, our third loser, whose mom is so ashamed of him, Jake. (laughs) Hey there. Hi there. Oh there. Okay, so at first I definitely thought like I was being singled out there. <laughs> but but I no. appreciate that wasn't the fact. <laughs> no, of course. Who who hurt you? And don't say us. <laughs> it definitely was not us. Couldn't have been us. I was a little worried starting out with Brock that he thought I was just going to be attacking him. Oh no, my god. But no, the- it was <laughs> not that you would have been wrong to do so. It was obviously He's only in 20 reference minutes to, late to our recording session. Our New Year's episode that we did in which you, our listeners, voted in a poll uh, to pick one of our pitches to develop as a third gate at Disneyland in California. <laughs> uh, that's right. So today we will finally be talking about the long-awaited park, Disney's Elemental Empire. <laughs> Fire, water, earth... Air, ice are the things that we mentioned when I went back and listened to it today. We mentioned ice? Yeah, because uh, of Frozen being uh, in there. Ice is water. Cool. Uh, ice, is, ice is a form of water. Yeah, Brock. Correct, Jake. That's its solid state. Other states <laughs> yeah, of matter thanks. include liquid and gas. <laughs> and plasma. And pla- not, you, look at you. <laughs> when I was so in smart. when I was in elementary school, um, we had to make this little like four page booklet where we talked about uh, the three states of matter. And I was like, I petitioned my teacher to be able to include one on plasma, and she was like, "Dude, if you want to do more work, fine, go ahead." <laughs> and you know what? It was not worth it. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> Everything about that statement shocks me, and by shocks me, I mean. Completely not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so, T, why don't you give us a little bit of a recap on, uh, since you are the winner and we're all dirty losers, uh, about what's going on here in Disney's Elemental Empire. I will, but first, quick check-in with uh, one Mr. Brock Rudolph Gabbert, who was absent last week. I How was, did you I enjoy our here. episode? I did. I did enjoy it. It was so weird listening to the episode and not remembering it. Um, because normally when I listen to the episode, it's like, yeah, I remember this conversation. I was a part of it. And it just <laughs> felt at, and then because it was me listening to you guys talk about ideas, I would occasionally just out loud, be like, add something to the conversation. Um, and, uh, That's weird, bro. yeah, because it felt like I was here recording, <laughs> but you guys were ignoring me. So, like I said, it felt like I was here recording. <laughs> we, you complain when we give you negative attention. You complain when we ignore you. What do you want, Brock? Yeah, I want positive on. attention. Well, that's clearly not an option. <laughs> that's all I've ever wanted my entire life. Anyone who's ever gone to school with me can agree. <laughs> Brock, any attention is good attention. And anyone who's ever gone to school with Tanner can agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me, um, this is our 45th episode, guys, um, Ooh, which means we're coming segue. up on <laughs> giving us attention. You'll see. Hang on. Hang on. This is our 45th episode. We're coming up on 50, and our 50th episode happens to coincide with our one-year anniversary. So where the tie-in from attention comes is... We are going to do an Ask Us Anything for our 50th. So if you start submitting questions now to our social media about podcasting, about ourselves, about just Disney in general, um, we're going to start compiling it's like those. like recording and, the pod with your best friends. Yeah, <laughs> and then we're going to answer those questions in our 50th episode. But don't worry. There, there, did my tie-in make sense now? That's not the whole episode. <laughs> this isn't going to be a four-minute episode. Right, there, there, there will be more to that episode. That's going to be a part of that episode. Hey, you um, assume that we would only get enough questions to fill up four minutes. I trust you 
our devoted <laughs> listeners to give us at least 10 minutes worth of content. I challenge yeah, you. Please. <laughs> yeah, that is please a challenge. Rise to it. I, for one, have faith that even if they give us four minutes, we can stretch that out into an hour-long podcast as we have yeah. 45 <laughs> episodes after this week to prove that we just love to hear ourselves talk. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have a built-in 20 for making fun of Brock every week anyways, which is why last week's was so short. Yeah. <laughs> I felt it. Yeah. <laughs> but I wait, you, you, basic, say, you say that like there was no making fun of Brock last week. <laughs> it was minimal. It was small. It was, like, it was still a like lot a for someone who wasn't end. there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so anyway, uh, back to the important things at hand, like my genius winning idea, Disney's Elemental course, Empire, is the theme park I pitched uh, devoted to lands based on water, fire, earth, and air, uh, with a giant castle in the center, mixing all of our elements together, shooting fire, uh, lots of LED lights uh, to keep movement of lava and fire and water throughout it all. Uh, it was pretty badass, almost as badass as Jake's art park, uh, but almost. <laughs> but you know, there's nothing as badass as an art park. Not quite. There. You just have to accept that. <laughs> I think the biggest idea we had for that was a piece of modern art. <laughs> we had some ideas. We had some that. good. No, ideas, I know, but we bro. spent about yeah. a half hour on that one piece of modern art. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we also spent about a half hour on this castle, too. <laughs> yeah, Talking that is true. about it. Have you ever been in a conversation with me about modern art? It's going to take at least 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, continue on, Tanner. Well, that's what the park was about. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Good do episode, have, guys. <laughs> do we have any other anything else uh, sketched out before we uh, before we jump in? I mean, um, I kind of thought we could dive in, uh, start making our way through the lands uh, one by one instead of. I'm just recapping we everything do, we've done. Okay, yeah, and just uh, if obviously if you're a little confused, go back and listen to our New Year's episodes. This one's in part two. Uh, one of the things we did discuss, which I think is a good place to start today, is the centerpiece, which, as we said, was a giant castle uh, made up of combining elements. Shut the f*** up. Also, Sorry. for our audience, that's the best way to respond to anybody who sneezes. <laughs> That I'm going to take factual. that sentence again. Uh, a <laughs> castle made of all those elements combining. Now that's going to be weird because we know Jake's not cutting you sneezing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. <laughs> I thought I'd give him the option and just listen to when he didn't take it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, how do you think we should go through this? Uh, we could take it element by element. We could take it person by person. Or uh, Tanner, what are your thoughts? I think uh, let's baby. start with our center, uh, our centerpiece. Uh, what we talked about last time was obviously we spent a lot of time, so I don't want to retread too much on this giant castle, although I think it's one of the most interesting visual pictures we've talked about on this show, mm-hmm. uh, which isn't just me patting my own back. It's because of a lot of the things you guys came up with for it. <laughs> <laughs> and that was going to host a phantasmic level show. Uh, based around Frozen 2 and the different elemental spirits at play there using puppetry, animatronics, live performers, and like other special effect ways of creating some and bringing to life some of these spirits in there. I have something else over time that I've developed that I really want on the castle or in the show of some kind, uh, which is... An elemental, an, uh, a combined elemental dragon that shoots out like, like breaths that are like all the elements combined. It could just be like slumbering on the castle sometimes. Maybe it's part of a fireworks show. Ooh, but yes. I think that would be cool. Can it be a dragon with four heads? That could be cool as well. I was thinking more of one head with a body that's sort of like multicolored that. Looks like it's all of them flowing together, but four heads is also good. And then four each head is be a different for the fireworks show. I, I like think. the single head. I think 
as a picture better. I just think the foreheads could be cool because they each cat could have a very different design, and then as the body meets, that's when all the different elements combine. That is what we did with the castle, but I like the one head better. I think that looks visually. I think it you start to get busy uh, with that much going on, uh, especially since I was going to double down on this dragon during the fireworks show, and I want it to work like some of those drones Disney was de- uh, rumored to be developing. Mm. <laughs> and I wanted to fly it along the sky. Can you explain the drone? Yeah. Uh, I believe they were, it was a couple years ago now where they were developing drones that were supposed to look like dragons or flying creatures of some sort across the sky. There was some test footage of it. It didn't really, it hasn't amounted to much, and I doubt it would now. Uh, they also do similar things at Universal uh, with their one of their Harry Potter shows uh to create the effects of patronuses using different drones in the sky so lots of ways you could go about using drones to create some cool kinetic movement yeah cool yeah i love it and i love our dragon and i think that I would be him. kind of a cool mascot of the park almost yeah i agree the elemental parks need dragon. more mascots yeah, <laughs> and that's a badass mascot too. That's like, that's it's and it's something that I think it's badass, but can be appreciated in mm-hmm. wonder by uh, people of all ages, right? Like, especially if it's not set up to be like super intense, just very pretty, mm-hmm. uh, right? That you can get kids that won't be too scared of it or anything. And I think another great place where we could kind of explore that dragon fitting is a ride that I don't remember exactly who uh came up with but it was a dark ride of sorcerer mickey uh kind of taking guests on a journey of controlling all of the elements that we had also talked about having in this hub is like an attraction so that could be something cool to nice. dive uh, into yeah. further yeah definitely yeah cool yeah i think we have a great we have a great castle. I'd mm-hmm. love to start digging into these lands. What do we start with? Let's start with the uh, let's start with the air because I feel like that. I don't know. It's light. <laughs> it's airy. It's a good place to start. <laughs> we just got a real insight into Eric Hand's active listening skills. <laughs> Did I? Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Tanner was like, let's start with this cool, different sorcerer, Mickey Darkright. And Eric was like, yeah, cool. Let's Sorry. get into these lands. <laughs> so I thought, actually, so here's my legitimate take on that. I, I thought we'd already talked about the sorcerer, Mickey Darkright. He's like, oh, let's put it in the castle. And I thought that was the end of the thought. Oh, no. Uh, we really, we had just kind of touched on the story. Some things that just today jumped out to me was I'd like to play with an idea Brock's brought before. Uh, ironically, with a uh, uh, f- his Fantasia ride of like a vehicle that moves on like water and land, and I think it'd be cool to kind of try to take this up further to also like using projection mapping make it feel like we're flying at different times with it. Uh, so kind of this vehicle kind of taking us through all of these lands, and then maybe our big finale could be uh, this uh, Mickey meeting this mighty dragon. Uh, in an animatronic form. Uh, yeah, that would be cool. Underneath, yeah, I like that. Yeah, that'd be super sweet. And maybe, maybe the dragon is who gives him this elemental magic, or because uh, I feel like having the dragon as a benevolent kind of yeah guy would be better. Yeah, exactly. Especially if we're gonna make it our mascot of the park and stuff, you can sell little uh, stuffed plushies of him, and Disney will make a. F- ton of money which they'll love and we'll get this cool dragon which Absolutely. we'll love <laughs> yeah this is this like an upgrade of figment yeah, which was our like, other dragon mascot and we saw what happened to him yeah this is <laughs> this is them writing their wrongs <laughs> <laughs> which means in 20 years they'll ruin it too yeah this reminded me in Disneyland Paris, as we've talked about Disneyland Paris has a lot of walkthroughs um, mm-hmm. there is a a walkthrough of the castle that also goes beneath the castle Mm -hmm. uh, into these caves and i can't remember the name of the imagineer but she really fought for the idea of this enormous dragon animatronic that lies under the 
lies under the castle and is just sleeping. Um, but you walk by and it's this an amazing dragon that's just sleeping there. And I think, if I remember correctly, um, every now and then, like it, like snorts a little bit of flame out of its nose yeah. while it's like snoring. If I'm not mistaken, it actually wakes up and looks around occasionally. It does, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's, that's just really an amazing cool. addition. Um, something that we could do something like that, where at one point while you're walking around the park, you might just encounter him, this giant animatronic, sleeping mm-hmm. somewhere, relaxing, lying out yeah. in the sun, whatever dragons do. But I think mm-hmm. that would be a really impressive set piece. Yeah, for sure. It'd be yeah. cool to kind of Very have cool. as like a spot where people would want to stop and take pictures and stuff. Uh, I think one of the things we had a lot of fun with last time was talking about the aesthetics of the park. And I think that's something I want to keep focusing on is all of this kinetic movement that we can have. I don't want to dive too deep into like the ride. I think we got a decent outline of it since we have four lands to also discuss with rides. <laughs> I think right. that's probably a good spot. So That is why I jumped to lands, because I thought we'd already <laughs> discussed it. <laughs> so, Eric, where did you want to go next? Uh, well, I think it'd be cool if we had dragons lying around and people can do photo ops and stuff. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, We're changing it. It's dragon land now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be fun to start with air. Um, okay. Just because that, I don't know, in my head, that's the the toughest nut to crack. Uh, yes. Uh, aesthetically. So I, why not jump into the mm-hmm. hard mode and then make our lives easier as we go? For sure. Just to kind of set the groundwork for our listeners and uh, everyone here, uh, d- depending on memories, uh, the land section we had talked about was going to be elevated uh, as I think we decided a quadrant of the park. That was a other mm-hmm. major discussion point we had. And mm-hmm. it was going to be a lot of like more crystalline glass with etchings to kind of evoke air elementals. Uh, Jake yeah. had a really great idea of having different like stained glass mobiles lining it. And then kind of a theme that we talked about with all of them was kind of capturing in the pathways, making them move like the element would. Mm -hmm. And another really fun thing I think we could just dive in a little bit with this area is uh, this Zephyr ride that we had pitched as a train is kind of being the train around the park. Yeah, Yeah. And I suggested making just a miniature Hindenburg. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah, (laughs) I was going to leave that. Goes Uh, great in the Fireland, too. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Well, uh, speaking of disasters, uh, we also referenced you making the (laughs) Zephyr ride uh, very similar to the Skyliners, which uh, hadn't, I believe, broken down yet when we pitched this as an idea. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So they've broken down many times since then. So we could have our own Hindenburg (laughs) still uh, with it. But I think that's really cool. It's another one opportunity for some more kinetic movement uh, throughout the park. Right. uh, Which, like. You hear like Walt Disney and stuff talk about how important that was to him, and I think this whole park has different opportunities of where we can evoke some of that to make everything feel alive. Mm-hmm. So, do people think we should go with having that kind of as a travel system around the I park? I love that. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, there's something yeah. magical about the monorail and the and the Disneyland trains about just being able to ride something unique uh, in mm-hmm. order to travel. Um, and I think uh, a couple of the parks, you know, I think could use something like that. And I think yeah. having this Zeppelin sort of travel system, especially if it's continuous instead of everyone load on, but mm-hmm. if it's something that's a little easier to just get on and go, um, that keeps people really flowing, that's going to be an amazing way to traverse the park. Yeah. Also, I think it gives us a, like a cool piece of architecture that we can put specifically here with air, which is like the station, Mm -hmm. like the main station, like we're in this elemental empire. And so we are taking the, the, the element that lifts things up and this is where we're 
where we are starting our journey around, right? Yeah. Obviously, there'll be stops in the other places, but this could be... Like Similar the to the Main Street Station. Yeah, the, like the yeah. Main Street Station or whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I like was also that thinking that each of, the, uh, each of the stations in each of the different lands would also look really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh, for sure. But, but yeah, no, that's the main like one, our, yeah. Our grand one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like cool. that a lot, and they can be cool. Steampunky. It's not really, Ooh. like, it uh, doesn't yeah, necessarily evoke, too. like, elemental, but I feel like that steampunk look is something that feels iconic to air for me in, like, mm-hmm. flying airships and things like well, that. Well, what we can make it do, we can hide, like, the support bars mm-hmm. with foliage and things like that and make it look like the terminal is floating. Yeah. Um, yeah, kind of like they do with uh, Av- um, Pandora and yeah. Animal Kingdom. Yeah. And then there'll be like an elevator or something that takes you up to it or an escalator so it doesn't feel like your staircase walking up to the <laughs> into mm-hmm. this floating thing. Yeah. I think that'd be kind of cool. Uh, yeah. I, honestly, Tanner, the steampunk thing, I, I could see that working throughout the entire park. Yeah. I think that goes hand in hand with each of the elements. For sure. I agree, because it kept coming up with a lot of the different topics that we talked about with things like Atlantis and the water section and uh, in Earth. We right. talked a lot about Journey to the Center of the Earth style things. So I think it's kind of a interesting, and it's that it's the timeless, like, f- it evokes the future and the past in a way that won't need to be updated. And is a nice stark contrast, I think, to, like, these pure elemental things. Yeah. Yeah. Some other things uh, we talked about in air. Uh, Like we said, I think air is kind of where we struggled a bit with like actual attractions. I know it's where I struggle. It was one of the ones where I struggled a little bit more. Uh, I did have the idea that we kind of talked about of like a, uh, like Brock had mentioned uh, before the walking tours of exploration of like the uh some floating ships in the style of like a treasure planet i think would be mm-hmm, cool yeah. to have and board and walk around and explore and then again using some of that lift to make it look like they're floating right yeah. it's probably a, the best place in the park to do like a dumbo clone to yeah that kind of style kind of um, to steal yeah. some of your idea of the floating carnival honestly uh was something that I thought yeah. a lot about uh, thinking back on this park where I'm like, a lot of those ideas would work really well here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, especially if we make like the air sort of the entrance into the park yeah. with this steampunk thing in mind, we can use air to introduce the idea that there is elements plus a little bit of machine magic that's mm-hmm. going on to, yeah. to do that. Um, and the walking tour is a really great place to do that as well. It's also not, you know, I've I've been I wouldn't say that I've been harumphy about sea, but the air uh, the airland is an interesting place to maybe have like a couple references to that. And, uh, <laughs> bring us in. <laughs> I, was, so, I know you wouldn't thing, say that. I was, <laughs> I was only harumphy about sea because in the first like ten episodes we talked about them so much, <laughs> and I had no idea who the. F- they were well we had to educate you that's what it was about it was an education it's been like a solid like 20 episodes since they've really come up with artists and i'm just like yeah maybe it's time (laughs) especially if we're going with the steampunky thing we could have vibes of steam all over uh there's a, a steam character who she's a pilot you know we could have some stuff about her and the um Mary Oceaneer, obviously, yeah. in the water areas. And I don't know, like Larry Lava Face in Fire. <laughs> we can make up some new ones. <laughs> Ooh. Rocky McRockerson. A, a quick <laughs> idea I had for the for air that <laughs> a quick idea I had for air would this almost seems like it's just an easy we could stick it in there, but um I think Disney could do it in a really cool way would be a zip line or a series of zip lines. You don't really see that in any Disney park. Yeah. But it's a good way to feel like you are essentially free falling and experiencing the rush of wind and everything. That might be a neat yeah, thing that'd be that we really could tie cool. in somehow. 
Um, obviously, with Disney, we would want to do it with a, you know a storyline or make it look more like you're on a hang glider or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but just that's something that could go in an air section. I think a hang that glider is, is cool. an interesting in for something like that. Hmm. Hmm. And that doesn't necessarily have to have an IP attached to it. That's something where, right, like, I right. think you honestly could just use and take a C or create a C character who's been creating these hangar uh, trips where you're kind of going and flying over right. the area. Yeah. Yeah. And then be really one neat. other thing I thought would be fun would be, like, a, like, uh, like, Going up high and having the glass floor <laughs> to like look. Oh, up. like they do at the Grand Since Canyon. Already, yeah, they yeah. charge you. A Those are cool. It's to, gonna have to, to be it. optional though. <laughs> like well, it can't yeah. be like the main walkway. Uh, but yeah, no, that'd be really cool. <laughs> no, I want the like I said, I want everything kind of glassy, but I want the the main walkways would be like foggy and like give up here very sturdy. It wouldn't just be like. Have fun up here on heights. It looks like there's nothing around. Yeah. (laughs) It'll be so so much fun for you. (laughs) I tried to come up with ideas for each of the lands. I did not succeed. Uh, But I tried to especially work with um, things that weren't rides because I thought other people Mm -hmm. might have more ideas for rides. Uh, And the idea I had for air was an aerial stunt show. Um, by that, I mean, you know, people, you know, hanging from ribbons and sort of gymnastic trapeze type stuff. Uh, yeah. I think that would be kind amazing. Like Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, and I be think very cool. if we needed to, we could, you know, tie it to an IP, which of course would have to be our favorite aerial based IP. Obviously it would mermaid. be about the trials and tribulations of dusty crop hopper of the planes oh, franchise. Geez. No, it's Ariel, <laughs> you know, the little mermaid. Here dude. I was thinking we were actually going to do like a Hercules in the sky kind of thing. And then you, <laughs> no, to be honest, I don't actually see an IP and I don't think it would need dude, one. And we could, could tie like it up. into the, and you to could Mickey have Mouse like and friends. Carl and stuff uh, just spinning off of uh, different balloons <laughs> uh, attached to all of the ropes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that could be a really cool stunt show. Yeah, that could be yeah, neat. I, I yeah, agree. that would be sweet. I agree. That's really fun. Also, now that I mention it, though, being able to see the house from up just floating off yeah. would be fun. Yeah. That, that would be funny. Yeah, I love, like, little <laughs> Easter eggs like that is what's going to make it really pop yeah. if it were to be fully created, right? Mm-hmm. So, I'm all for it. Yeah, I'd say that's a really solid, uh, though, overall take on air. Yeah. Unless there's I anything would, that jumps m- out majorly. My one last idea is, um, I know Tanner really likes these, and I've been thinking about them a lot because he's been mentioning them to me a couple times, but... Uh, it would be cool to have one of those roller coasters where you lie flat on your belly so it feels like you're flying. Yes. I think air would be a perfect yeah. place for that mm-hmm. type of coaster. Another option um, it just occurred to me uh, in Disney Springs, they have that hot air balloon. Oh, yeah. That goes up and down. Maybe do something with hot air balloons. Um, Sorry. I don't I, know. I just had an idea for, the idea for that coaster I mentioned is it could be Peter Pan and Tinkerbell teaching you how to fly. Yeah, that'd be really cool. I like that a lot. I actually had Peter Pan stick, flying really ride cool. down here too. Thanks, Brock. So I think that's really cool. It's like a flying coaster. Love flying coasters. Big fan. Want to ride a flying coaster right now, boys? Let's go. <laughs> Podcast over. Gonna go find one. <laughs> so what I was uh, leading into with the hot air balloon thing was I was thinking maybe that could be our up theme yeah. thing. You could make the balloon look like it's a lot of little balloons and yeah. maybe the basket looks like Carl's house mm-hmm. or something along those lines. Yeah, that'd be really fun. I like that a lot. Yeah. Or maybe we actually have Carl's house and you can tour it. I, I don't yeah. know. That could be also an interesting... Uh, I, I think w- the like walkthrough experiences are something that interests me in Disney. Getting more of them in the American parks would be cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just because I'm a sucker for theming (laughs) and i think i think if we're building a park from the ground up something i've always liked is at least how i've understood it because obviously i've never been there but it does seem like a lot of 
Disneyland Paris is they're just taking the normal footpaths and making them feel like yeah. walkthrough attractions. And mm-hmm. with a park like this, I think that'd be amazing because you're always going through these stunning vistas, these crazy out there kind of things. And mm-hmm. if we could just make every path feel like it's a walkthrough attraction, that'd be cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. All right. Any uh, element jumping out that we want to talk about next? Fire. Fire. Fire, fire, fire. Uh, Just to uh, give an overview of some of the things we talked about, and we could flush some of these out and add anything else that we wanted to, was uh, the walking paths here are kind of uh, feeling very sporadic, moving like fire, having like burnt uh mark burn marks as if like the path that you're walking had been burned away yeah at some point yeah, yeah, yeah. which i really liked cool. a lot uh and then some things that i thought were cool were uh like brock had said uh getting some shows in there so like a fire dancing performance would be a cool mm-hmm. way to incorporate fire mm-hmm. here uh, yeah i was very proud I of the open is, uh... flame pit restaurant that i wanted where everything's cooked over giant open fire oh, pits. yeah was that what you mentioned in <laughs> yeah. the last episode because that was the idea i wrote down and i'm like this yeah. sounds familiar but it's yeah. probably an original <laughs> idea <laughs> it wasn't okay <laughs> yeah but that seems probably, really yummy okay. yeah it does sound good i want an open barbecue right now <laughs> So I was actually. I was thinking, oh. oh my god, Brock! I've been trying to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I've literally been trying to interrupt people for like three minutes. But now I'm going to interrupt you because I want to talk about the restaurant more. <laughs> we'll get to it. Yes, Eric has the floor. I think this would be a cool place for an indoor roller coaster going through a volcano. That's all. That's all I was going to say. Hell yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. Uh, like I said, one of uh, the other things we talked about were a. Uh, uh, like a Moana Taka type ride through attraction and mm-hmm. like a, uh, and we had talked about, uh, that later on in earth doing like a, uh, into the earth ride, a journey to the center of the earth ride. Uh, but yeah, I think a roller coaster, uh, is kind of, kind of having like a volcano be the pinnacle point of this area kind of like we're talking about the train station uh stop being in air with the zephyrs there uh having like a giant volcano would be really f-ing cool yeah yeah i agree yeah i agree uh again i think that's a cool way to incorporate uh we can use some of our like sea exploration into this volcano and i think that would be a really cool thrill ride for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. A roller coaster there going go. through and around a volcano yeah. would be amazing. And then like I'm not even necessarily thinking roller coaster in like a even like a space mountain intensity level, like a big thunder. Yeah. Uh yeah. like kind of like almost like rickety using that like uh mm-hmm. um so so we're in that steampunk kind of thing and there's like little you know, outshoots of like, psh, like steam yeah. coming out of the thing, and we're like rickety mm-hmm. roller coastering our way through the volcano. It's, I think it'd be kind of fun. Yeah, kind of similar yeah. to a lot of the Disney I coasters. I think the tracks aren't that thrilling, uh, but the theming and the stuff that they add on to them, uh, like Big Thunder, makes them scarier and more exciting than they actually really would be right. if you were just riding like the track without any of that theming. So using the smoke and the heat and using some cool projection mapping to show b- lava bubbling underneath you, I think would be really cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah I like those a lot. All right, so we have we have our thrill ride, we have a restaurant. We have yeah, a show. Brock wanted to talk the about dance. the restaurant a little bit more. I think. Uh, yeah, it, it was more just about the design of the restaurant. Yeah. Uh, to me, I kind of pictured it as... Um, sort of a a circular outdoor restaurant that kind of surrounds maybe in tiers uh, and in the center is this pit uh, Mm -hmm. where, you know, they actually do the cooking, kind of with vomitorium so they can actually get to it. But that way everyone in the restaurant can watch them do the cooking on this big flame pit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I like that a lot. I can picture that. I, I like that idea of it being like a round restaurant with the pit in the middle and the tiers going up. So like the pit would be down low and you kind of enter the restaurant from high and then you go down into the restaurant. Yeah, kind of exactly. Thing. Yeah. That's really neat. I like that. 
Yeah, I think that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, and then I think uh, kind of we have this thrill coaster, and then I think like kind of doing a mix of the elements by having like a Moana like raft ride, but where we see this giant Taka animatronic kind of would be really cool and like Mm -hmm. burning and the symbolization of new life and (laughs) (laughs) all that bullshit (laughs) I think would be pretty fun to play with (laughs) I agree yeah Mr. Sir I agree Uh, cool what else do we need here do we need like a like a seat ticket or anything or we we feel we feeling good I'm feeling Let's good see. about fire. I'm feeling good. Like we said, I think just for the sake of our listeners, we, we're we going to go through and we're going to develop things a little bit more, but not go absolutely insane with yeah. the detail of everything. Right. Otherwise, yeah. like, honestly, this could be I like mean, a 10-part series. Hours. This yeah, could be so. a 10-part right. series if we did that. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. All right. Let's uh, let's go to. I feel like the natural bridge connection through the volcano takes us into Earth. Yes, Earth. I am excited to talk about this one because uh, during it, I kept talking a lot about like uh, the meeting of stone and forest and like vines overtaking like temple areas, and like I couldn't really pick up on a specific movie that like completely captured that aesthetic just yet, and then. In the time since then, uh, a movie about a certain last dragon came out that kind of aesthetically matched a lot of what I was picturing for this area. Uh, So Ray and the Last Dragon, I think, would be a really cool end to some of the just aesthetics of the area, along with, like we said, uh, carving out the paths here. So, like, the paths are carved out of stone using 90-degree angles. Uh, Keeping that all, I think, would be really cool. And I think fits in line Mm -hmm. really well with that imagery. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Some things we had talked about there were a, like, children's gem dig site kind of attached to, like, the Seven Dwarfs, which I think would be really fun as, like, a playground climbing experience. Uh, Today I thought about having, like, we could add in some, like, animatronics up, like, in the cavern so you can kind of see like dopey yeah. doing silly things like that uh you can kind of yeah. climb into mine carts and stuff they won't move or anything climb dig up gems mm-hmm. just little things like that i think like those hands-on areas it's kind of gives the park that uh we're trying to entertain people from one to 100 uh in this kind of is an area specifically for children uh to be able right. to play and get tactile with things in a post COVID or alternate COVID reality where this park, uh, exists. <laughs> yeah. I like the alternate COVID reality. <laughs> it's a good reality. I want to be living in, in that timeline. Why aren't we in that timeline? Guys? <laughs> Bad luck. Yeah. Uh, I had kind of thought of a, obviously this would be a good place for your typical mine coaster, but you know, Mm -hmm. those are kind of overdone. So I had been thinking on a ride that was like a combination of kind of like a dark ride. I would say kind of like tower of terror, Yeah. but instead of going up and then dropping down, you start at ground level and drop down underground. And then oh, yeah. there's a dark ride underneath, like how Tower of Terror is capable of moving around like a dark ride, but then it also is a drop ride. Yes. And then at the end, you come back to the surface. Yeah. But I don't know what could be happening underground to make it interesting. I mean, you could just go through like I, fossils and shit, um, but I think there needs I to be more of a story a than that. I our Goofy versus Osha. Uh, dark ride we had talked about. <laughs> I, I was going to say that was exactly the ride system I had uh, pitched when I was pitching the uh, uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth ride. But mm-hmm. transitioning that type of ride system to the Goofy thing, uh, honestly, me personally, I would kind of like Goofy traveling to the center of the Earth. Um, yeah. <laughs> but a mine would be cool as well. Yeah, I think you can. I mean, there's no. I don't think any reason not to sort of weave the two together. I really like the idea of the Snow White uh, dwarves mining into the earth. Mm -hmm. We could just be Mm -hmm. chasing gems. Yeah. And in there, we also encounter Goofy, who is also chasing gems, right? Like, that could just be a part of what happens here in Earth. I guess my one thing about that is there already is a ride of the dwarves mining gems in Fantasyland, you know? 
What yeah. do you guys think? Yeah, that's why uh, I mean, originally we had come yeah, up I, with this Goofy's uh, mine uh, was to kind of make it different and not make it so much about uh, gem hunting. It's just more of the silly dangers that Goofy could find himself in if he was trying to operate a mine mining system right i was mostly just talking about like an aesthetic and to get yeah. people in the line that doesn't mean that like i had nothing to do with the ride itself i apologize if that did not come oh across. yeah no i was confused and that's probably on me fools all of you is goofy gonna have a canary that he takes down yeah. in the mine with him? <laughs> <laughs> and, like we see the canary die and then we have to evacuate the yes. vine yes but yes. it's not like a it's not like a pluto canary uh it's like a it's like a friend of theirs like this is chester canary uh oh, he's got like a hat he's got a fun little personality oh, oh. <laughs> We're going to retroactively oh. edit it into the old cartoons. <laughs> oh. It's just like the orange bird they're going to bring. <laughs> Got orange bird in a bird cage? Oh, yeah. no. Uh, All right, quick, change the subject. Yeah, but I think that could be kind of fun. I think it's a lot of mining stuff, but I think that's kind of one of the things people aesthetically get with uh, – specifically like this area is uh this type of stuff and then one way to kind of avoid that in the rest of the land was i wanted to pitch a uh right on the last dragon ride uh where we're kind of going through the caverns and seeing the uh dragon gem from the film so kind of just like exploring on the back of a dragon through all of these stone temples and stuff i think would be kind of an exciting way to travel and incorporate earth that's not necessarily all mining rides <laughs> do you picture that as gotcha. like a coaster right. or a dark ride or uh i hadn't gotten too far into it i was kind of picturing a very easy moving coaster style because i want you to feel yeah i want you to get like the little dips of like your fly floating around but not so much a thrill coaster yeah yeah it might be fun instead of just mines too if we could incorporate like mountains and canyons and stuff yeah yeah i was just gonna say i would love to see here a matterhorn reborn with 2020 technology Ooh, that's Ooh, cool that would be Ooh, really yeah. cool like um, the bobsled you know I mean? yeah mm-hmm. uh, and just like a, a ride through a mountain yeah good great minds jake great minds i tell you what. yeah and i mean if yeah, it's in course. disney world it's not it's never been done there, so it doesn't feel like a repetition. Well, no, it's in Disneyland, though. Well, right. then they it's have in California. To <laughs> You're right. That's what the the episode was. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, quick story for you. So they were going to build a Matterhorn Reborn in Disney World uh, in Epcot in the Japan Pavilion in the 80s, and it was supposed to be amazing, but they wanted to theme it after Mount Fuji. Mm. Um. And one of Disney's biggest sponsors at the time was Kodak Film, and their competitor was a company named Fuji. So Kodak yeah. said, "You absolutely cannot build that ride." So Disney was like, "Oh, okay," <laughs> and that was the end of it. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd like that story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, it, also in this alternate COVID-free reality, uh, we can like shut down like since it's in california and the matterhorn is like dangerous for human uh, (laughs) riding nowadays maybe just shut that one down (laughs) and and reborn it in our (laughs) elemental land i say let's have two and they're both dangerous now also it doesn't have to be the matterhorn right it could be another alps thing or just a mountain that exists in this elemental land yeah. but it's yeah. like it that be style fictional. of ride, mm-hmm. mount right? chapek yes <laughs> yeah it's got a perfectly smooth dome <laughs> on the, at the top <laughs> it's just the ceo mountain range and you have like Iger peak and <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Eisner Crest. Yeah. Yeah. We love the that. Eisner Plateau. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's a lot of fun. Uh and then we kind of have a little bit of all these areas uh mixing different 
aesthetics together of like what these can mean. That reminds me kind of, I, I meant to mention in the fire section, I think that'd be a cool place for that Maleficent ghoster that I pitched. Right, I think yeah, the idea yeah. was oh, actually yeah. born in that episode from something Jackie had told me about like the green fire would be really cool. Uh, so kind of right. using yeah. some of that would be fun. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think Earth would be a fun place, you know, for these little Easter eggs. Like we have the up thing of mm-hmm. like maybe Mickey and a team of adventurers like have little and like a section off where they're like wearing safari hats and shit and are trying to like navigate through the elements. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, little little photo op meet and greet. Mm-hmm. They could mm-hmm. be they could be humans in costumes, not robots too. That's also fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just prepping for 2040 when the world is nothing but robots. I saw right. a video the other day <laughs> of robots doing parkour, and the oh, Uncanny I just saw that Valley this morning is real, <laughs> and I am waiting to embrace our robot overlords. I just I don't <laughs> understand the people who do this. At what point do they think in their minds this isn't going to lead to an apocalypse? <laughs> <laughs> this will be At fine. First, I thought you were going to say, at what point in their minds do they think uh, robots doing parkour would be cool? It's awesome. It is cool. But it's going to lead to an apocalypse. <laughs> it's going to be a rad apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'll be a rad, like, ten years before they uprise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of, like, yeah, watching them do it. We're going to have a real it. good run there. <laughs> It'll be pretty bodacious, guys. <laughs> Um, so cool. We, it looks like we've got air, earth, and fire. You know what's next, boys? Glub, 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 water. Electricity! (laughs) (laughs) We can mix that with the water, right? That's safe. Yeah, 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 of course. (laughs) Yeah, so like we said, in water, we were going to have these winding paths. Uh, Jake had mentioned getting some of the, uh, much like, uh, everyone's favorite putt-putt aesthetic, uh, little shallow pools of water uh kind of on the ground he had talked about oh yeah, yeah. we i i they have that at um typhoon lagoon mm-hmm. uh, um when you're waiting in line it's like there's parts of the line that are in a like underwater and you like have to ford through like a little one inch deep stream and i just love that yeah. there um now obviously you don't want to get your shoes wet when you're at a water park it's fine but when you're not at a water park but i just really like that aesthetic and it really brings you into the immersion yeah and you um, know that also waterfalls and pools uh, making everywhere. them get wet whether they want to or not. I think we should burn the guests in fire. <laughs> I think we should drench them in water. <laughs> Pile rocks on them. Yeah. <laughs> and then blow at them. All the cast members say, make just them blow at them. Ooh, we should get the dragon to eat them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, so some things we talked they about. Like, they like crawl up into its mouth for a photo op. Up, down, done, that, that, <laughs> gone. That fast. Like the gone. lawyer in Jurassic Park, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. Boom, baby. <laughs> so some things that so, we I had apologize. talked about here were uh, an Atlantis Stark ride, which uh, is something that we've actually gone on to develop, a, I would say, a pretty cool one in a later episode. Yeah. Uh, as well as a underwater restaurant that I had some new ideas for after listening today. And I also had an idea about an I underwater restaurant. I had a restaurant. seahorse carousel uh, was another idea just for like a smaller ticket ride uh, underwater. Sure. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> nice. So my idea for this uh, underwater ride is I feel like a lot of times the temptation is to either make it like a plane aquarium or like inside of a boat like the Nautilus, which is kind of what we had discussed last time. Instead, (coughs) I would like to almost make it like we are in an undersea cave grotto area uh, surrounded Mm. by, like, with aquariums on some of the sides, like, pictured uh, with, like, cut-out rocks and stuff, but a very, like, underwater uh, aesthetic. So it feels almost like we are eating under the sea without the Actually, could could this be Ariel's... Grotto where she keeps all her treasures and stuff. Yeah, it could be that. There. That would be cool. Because that might be cool yeah. to see like all of the artifacts and stuff from the shipwrecks and everything. Yeah, for sure. And I think that'd be really fun in like uh, projections of like the tops of boats going over us at the top would be really oh, that's cool. cool. 
uh, like all of a sudden. Oh yeah, I like that. Basically, like you see I want a shadow go over the restaurant. Yeah, I want the under the water equivalent to like the T Rex and uh, and uh, Rainforest Cafe restaurants. Yeah, I absolutely love that idea, Tanner. That's yeah. great. Plus, um, it kind of makes me think of Luca a little bit too. Yeah. We have a lot of those great scenes of them mm-hmm. living underwater, and yeah, I really like that. That that's a great idea. It's actually funny because the, uh, the one attraction that I had for water in my notes was damp room, and this is a room that's <laughs> oh. damp. So I'm I think that's going to be perfect. <laughs> that's nice. That's what? nice, Brock. I can't help but feel like you're not into this idea, Brock. No, I genuinely <laughs> am super excited. I had two water ideas, well, and one was submarine restaurant, and this is better, and the other was damp room, and this combines both of my ideas. Because well, I was going to uh-huh. go with a, a moist menagerie, <laughs> oh. but where uh, it's like an aquarium, but it's a moist menagerie. Yes. It's oh, a, that's nice. Moist. But it, again, you know, Tanner moist. comes in with the better idea. Soggy rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Stop reading my diary. <laughs> no, but I think that's a fun way to do the under the water restaurant in a way that we haven't necessarily seen as much of. Uh, yeah, before. that's really and cool. Just yeah. like kind of going all in on that, I think could make it a very like must eat place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I think they'd be rather. Sh- yeah, I think it'd also be a cool area for our. Um, speaking of Luca, the Luca stage show idea. Oh, right. oh, that's with, great. Like, the water transformations. From our, what episode Luca was that? Stage episode. show two? No, it's from the Luca oh, that's episode. Right. Luca that was episode. from the Luca episode. That's right. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Luca episode. Remember when we did sorry Luca? Sorry there. <laughs> yeah, I remember now. Yeah. <laughs> Stage shows two is last week, Jake. Yeah, I, I know. Fool. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Cool. I think it's sick. I think that's awesome. Cool. I think this is this is yeah. cool. So do we have all the lands then? Do we have everything? Yeah. I think we do. I, uh, yeah. I, I want to do. I've been writing down all the attractions as we've gone, so I just want to do a quick recap of everything we have in each land. All right. Uh, so in air, we've got the zeppelins, which obviously go throughout the park. We have Jake's zipline idea. Uh, we have the Peter Pan flying type coaster, uh, and we have an aerial stunt show. Uh, in Earth. We have the kids' gem dig site. We have based on the seven dwarfs. Yeah. We have the Raya and the Last Dragon uh, coaster, which sounds awesome. Uh, we have the updated Matterhorn, which I would ride the hell out of. I don't know why I'm editorializing all of these. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me know if I miss anything. By the way, uh, in the Fire Land, no, you we missed have the goofy our, mine ride. I, the, oh my god, <laughs> the, the canary. The main one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe the reverse the Tower of Terror. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, and then in the Fire Land, we have the Volcano Coaster about Moana and Taka. We have a Fire Dancer show. We have the Fire Pit Restaurant. And uh, Tanner's Maleficent yeah. Coaster. Um, and then finally, in the water, we have the Atlantis Dark Ride, uh, the Seahorse Carousel Kids, Kids Ride. Uh, the Ariel's Grotto Cavern Restaurant, uh, and the Luca Stage Show. Yeah. Nice. I think that's cool. a decent uh, outline Very cool. of a park. I'd go there without anything yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. So for anybody who is looking to learn more about this park and did not listen to our original episode, go back and listen to our episode from New Year's, which was developing a third Disneyland gate. And uh, that ties in nicely with what we covered today. But, yeah, that is a sweet park, T. Sweet. Nicely done. Also, if you have any more questions, write them in for our 50th. <laughs> I would rather spend $4,000 to go here than I would to spend two nights at the Star Wars Hotel. That's for yes. damn sure. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, my. <laughs> the Star Wars sure Hotel some... pisses me off. So, uh, real quick here. I think occasionally, I know, uh, I know me, Eric Ham, the human being, is going to reference this park as if it is canonically existent. <laughs> yeah. So, like, for future hotel episodes and stuff like that, I think we can include Elemental Empire 
as like a, a staging ground for certain things. Agree? Sure. I like that. Agreed. I mean, yeah. that's what I think this we podcast kind of did the is same about. thing with uh, like the sea land and uh, the other lands we've yeah. developed, and like uh, we've kind of done it with the, uh, the Greek hotel we we've <laughs> referred to again and again. Yeah. <laughs> there has been a couple of things um, where my mom and I will be talking about Disney and she'll be like, oh, I can't wait till we're there and we can check out the blah, 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 because I haven't seen it yet. And I'm like, hey, mom, that was um, something we made up on our podcast that doesn't actually exist. And she gets really bummed out. <laughs> Specifically, she was really into the Gaston dinner theater show. Oh, yeah. Uh, There's a couple other ones she was super excited about and like in her brain just convinced herself that they were real. <laughs> and was That's hilarious. And also deeply sad for her, I'm sure. Because yeah. <laughs> all I'm going to say is we've developed a lot of really cool shit over uh, 45 yeah, episodes. Over 45 so. episodes. <laughs> we would have so, some real duds, too. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't forget it the happens. failures. We yeah. Can't, uh... <laughs> I've never failed once. And speaking of failures... It's time for the <laughs> lightning round. <laughs> I was going to say, speaking of really great ideas, but. Uh... <laughs> All right, let's spin that wheel. Spin, 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 spin. Okay, today we are doing a re-theme. We are re-theming Kilimanjaro Safaris <laughs> from Animal Kingdom. That, of course, is the ride where you get in the safari truck and you actually go out and look at real live animals. It's not really and a ride. It's just like a safari, right? Yeah. Um, and this okay, is cool. kind, of a, kind of an appropriate one. We're retheming it to Pocahontas. Retheme cool. Kilimanjaro Safaris to Pocahontas. Who is up first? Tanner. All right. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Much like on Kilimanjaro Safari, we will be riding through now uh, the Americas uh, before they uh, have been completely taken over. And Governor Ratcliffe will be leading us on the safari, uh, talking about all of the ways that we can destroy the earth around us by uh, digging and mining and just taking over and claiming things as our own and just destroying this beautiful landscape as he's pitching all the ideas on how he can ruin it all. The end. Nice. I like it. Also, the song uh, Dig, Dig, Digs fucking slaps. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The song in that movie. Uh, all right. It's my turn. Wow, great. Okay, and we're going. So, this is going to be a two part safari. The first part we're going to call Painting with the Colors of the Wind, where we. Uh, Visit uh, lots of beautiful locales. The spirits are speaking to us. It's very beautiful and, and serene. And then we get to part two, which we're calling the Savages Savages section, where we have both sides <laughs> arguing why the other is more savage. And then a uh, historical uh, a PhD comes out and says it's the white people's fault. Bye. Okay. <laughs> I All was right. going to say, man, this is like a much less cynical take on it than I think I expected from Eric. I forgot there was a part two. <laughs> yeah, we got there. Uh, next up, we yeah, have Brock. Um, okay. So my idea was the paint with all the colors of the wind thing, but I'm going to delve into that more because Eric decided to take two <laughs> ideas. Um, but essentially, we're going to replace the area of the track with now what is a, uh, a river. Actually, it's going to be a little bit more just around the river bend. Uh, and we are going to have uh, all the guests in a longboat as we explore creatures of the Americas as well as foliage. So it looks a lot like more like a North American East Coast type of area. Uh, so we're going to see deer and all that sort of thing as Pocahontas in animatronics explains to us all about uh, that stuff. That was the end of my time, and I just decided to let that nice. end me. <laughs> nice. I believe that leaves us with All right. uh, Is that me then? Mr. Jake Gabbard. Yep. Okay. So for mine, we're going to make the uh, trucks into big canoes, just like uh, Pocahontas's canoe. And uh, she will be riding in the truck with us, uh, and we will each be given a bow, and she will be teaching us how the Native Americans used to hunt for their food. And we'll be driving through all the animal enclosures and learning how to shoot the animals. Uh, and that will be followed up by learning how to use every part of the animal as we fillet them and cook them and use their skins for pelts. Uh, I'll have a nice flamingo hat. It'll be great. That's my time. 
We do love yeah, gamified you rides. Teach those kids how to field dress a yeah, field dress a deer. Field dress a flamingo. Don't forget <laughs> yeah. it's a flamingo or you know, an elephant, a or giraffe. A, a raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a little too close to home for that movie, but yeah. Yeah, leave Nico alone. Yeah, that's the whole point of the safari is learning how to field dress a raccoon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Miko. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm you that gotta note. eat. <laughs> Brock, why don't you take us out of here? All right. Uh up, up, and away, Tanner. Our Facebook's going into the air pavilion. Or is it our Instagram? What's our Facebook? <laughs> it's our Instagram is in the air pavilion. Oh, our Instagram <laughs> is in the air pavilion. Main underscore street underscore musings. Man, this was so smooth last week. It was. But it was it really boring. Was. Oh, no. <laughs> We're heading down a rocky road toward our Facebook in the earth pavilion. Facebook.com slash Main Street Musings. Ooh, and who's that hunk of hunk of burning love? Oh, it's Eric with our Twitter in the Fire Pavilion. At MSM underscore podcast. And I'm a soggy Brock. Uh, <laughs> everybody, make sure to give us a mm. five star review. <laughs> Let your friends know about our podcast. Uh, remember to vote on our Twitter polls and also be sure to ask us questions for our QA. Yes, hit us up on any of our social media. Post those questions, your comments, your concerns, any insults you have for us to use on Brock would be great. Send us some creative ones. It'll be awesome. And you can send all of this information also right to Jake's phone at... (laughs) (laughs) Goodbye, friends. Bye. Bye.